Hello, welcome to the overview for Pliny the Younger, Selected Letters by Joanne Shelton. This text contains 30 letters, 29 of them complete. The only letter that is not complete is letter 411. Included here are sections 6 to 9 from letter 411. The table of contents shows you the many features of the book. There are maps and illustrations. There's an introduction that covers five topics. You can see the 30 letters covered here. There's an appendix of inscriptions, two genealogy charts, a glossary of proper names, a complete vocabulary, and two indices. I will go over each of the features now. The introduction has five parts. There's the life of Pliny, the letters of Pliny, a chronology, a note to readers, and suggestions for further reading. You can see on your screen the beginning of the introduction, The Life of Pliny. You can also see on the right hand side the last part of the note to readers in which the author suggests for instructor, instructors who prefer a thematic order how they can go about doing that within this book. The book contains three maps you can see one here of Italy and Sicily, and nine illustrations. The illustrations come with captions and are pedagogically appropriate. The text and notes, as is common for most Bolchese books, appear on facing pages. Each letter has a brief introduction to give the students context. The Latin text, printed on the left-hand side on the verso, followed by notes and vocabulary. All the notes and vocabulary needed for the Latin text in any spread will appear in that spread. So for the Latin you see here the introduction or the salutation and these six lines. You do not need to turn the page. All the notes and vocabulary are found on page two and three. Unless it's vocabulary that is assumed to be known, then it will be found in the back of the book in the complete glossary. In addition to the main text, the notes and vocabulary, there is also an appendix of inscriptions. In the introduction, Joanne Shelton, the author, talks about what we know of Pliny and uses some inscriptional evidence about his family, career, and the benefactions he gave to his hometown. In this appendix, you can see the inscriptions that are relied upon when providing this information. The first one, the most complete, is translated, and the others are just offered for teachers who want to go over this with their students or for students who are curious. There are two genealogy charts. One is for the family of Pliny, and the other is for the family of Aria. There's a glossary of proper names. This is separated out from the vocabulary and from the notes on the page so that complete descriptions of places and people can be provided without clogging up the page and making it hard to find grammatical notes or other vocabulary. The complete vocabulary is found in the back. Here you see the example of the first page, the A's, and the last page, the V's and X's. And finally, there are two indices. The first is on grammar and syntax. This is very useful for showing students where they may have encountered something before for choosing which letters may be most appropriate for your students, or for finding a letter for sight reading or a test. Index 2 is a subject index, which may help you in organizing the letters, although in the introduction, as you recall, there is a thematic suggestion made by the author, or for students maybe writing on a topic for your class who want to find what other letters in this book may cover that topic. This book, like all of our books, are available for purchase on our website, www.bolchese.com. Ebooks are available from a variety of ebook providers, including worldwide availability from Google Play. A full list of ebook availability is viewable on the product page.